Why are you running to be the leader of the Conservative Party? I've been a member of the Conservative Party for 30 years, just over 30 years, in fact. So I've been involved with the party through the really great times, the good times, the successful times, but also the times when we've been unsuccessful, the bad times. So, you know, I'm from the party, for the party. I'm a grassroots activist first and foremost. And I believe I can lead our party and that I'm the right leader to effectively unite, bring our party together, and actually make us match fit when it comes to attacking the Labour Party, the Labour government, and ensuring that we can do a robust job in opposition. What do you think we need to do over the coming years to win the next general election? And how will you achieve it? So I think, first of all, we have to literally take stock of the state that we're in. We have just been rejected by the British public in the last general election. And so we do have to take a hard look at ourselves. The public don't really want to hear from us. We've lost the trust of the British public and we now need to regroup and renew. We absolutely need to renew ourselves as a party. And we've got a lot of work to do there, basically. We've got to restore the public's trust and confidence in us all over again, because that has gone. We've got to demonstrate that we're professional, professional and united, and that we're ready to serve the British people. When you look back on their views on us, it hasn't been a happy state of affairs. But with that, we've got to unite, we've got to work together. We've got to put shoulder to the wheel because there is a Labour government that yes, it has a big majority, but they're effectively abusing that already. And they're doing things that they said to the British public they would not do. So we have a constitution, constitutional duty to step up, step up and make sure that we are match fit, not just to win the next election, but actually regain the trust and confidence of the British people because currently we're not there. And I believe that if I'm leader of the Conservative and Unionist Party, I can absolutely carry people with us, our parliamentary party, but also go one step further and with that, which is to rebuild the very, very structures, the building that we're in right now, which is our campaigning machinery, our campaigning headquarters, give our membership some hope all over again, engage our members. Our members are totally disaffected and we saw that in the general election. We need to give them their voice back, we need to empower them and we need to rebuild the Conservative Party so that we can absolutely get out there again, win back the trust and confidence of the British people and show that not only are we an effective opposition but that we can actually win the next general election and unpick the Labour government. Do you have a longer term vision for the party beyond 2029? Well, the vision for the party has to be one about our own vision, how we want to not just run the party, but govern the country. We've got to broaden our appeal. Just look at the loss of the general election. There are so many people that have been switched off by us, by us and our politics, our conduct and behaviour. We have to show, and I have, think we have to do this collectively as a party, we have to show that we're the party of aspiration all over again, the party that believes in giving the British public the freedom to succeed, that we're on the side of the hard-working, law-abiding, silent majority, and we need to win them back again. And that's effectively how I would not just lead, but govern as well. Leadership is about being strong. Yes, it's about being assertive, but it's also about winning over hearts and minds and carrying people with us. And it's only when we do that, we can successfully win all over again. And on that, we also have to really build upon the foundations that we have. You know, we have over 5,000 councillors across the country that are out there every single day, serving the public, serving their communities, serving the country. We've got to harness them. We've got to give them their voice back. We've got to give them a seat at the table all over again. And we can rebuild through them, but also by growing our base and actually engaging with the public all over again. What are the top three policy areas you'll prioritise? And what specific actions will you take in those areas? Well, I think, first of all, this is actually about the direction of travel, as it would be under my leadership for the Conservative Party, but also us as the opposition in Parliament as well. We have to focus on the economy because at the end of the day, the public, everybody wants to be, be better off and they want to know that their taxes are being spent in the right way. But there are so many other areas as well. So let me give you an example, protecting free speech. Within days of coming into government, the Labour government are already eroding some of, the, some of the areas and aspects of free speech. We believe in free speech. We believe in the freedom to succeed. But, you know, this is exactly where we've now got an over-dominant government that is interfering in the way in which we live our lives. Alongside that, law and order. 
We are nothing if we're not the party of law and order. And I'm absolutely proud of my record as Home Secretary of over three years, empowering the police, tougher sentencing, changing our laws, investing in 20,000 more police officers, putting law and order back at the agenda of who we are as a party. And that is that absolutely matters. We can't have a civil society and a free society if we don't have law and order at the heart of that. And then, of course, standards. Where do we want to go with the future of our country? Investing in higher standards of education, making sure that we are the country of the brightest and the best, investing in young people, thinking about their hopes and opportunities and their aspirations, and making sure that it's not just the schools, but when it comes to apprenticeships, giving them the chance to actually build a career, get their foot on the ladder, Actually, in the way in which we've successfully done in the past, it happened in the 1980s under great leadership and great vision, when actually we had record rates of unemployment. We don't have that now, but we have to be the party of hope and aspiration. And we have to believe in those economic freedoms and opportunity. How would you describe your leadership style and how will you ensure unity and inclusiveness within the party? So my style is, um, it's professional, it's respectful and it's engaging. And that would effectively be the way in which I would work with colleagues. And I think it also helps when it comes to unifying our party. Um, by unifying, let's think about this. It's, yes, we think about parliamentary party, but it's much broader than that. You know, we have a party, we are the Conservative and Unionist Party in Scotland and Wales, for example. We have our councillors that I've already touched on. You know, we are a broad party and we're a party that represents the whole of the United Kingdom. And that really matters. And that matters in terms of how we also broaden our appeal and start to reflect the country all over again. Because currently we've now got parts of the country where we don't have conservative representation anymore. So we do need to start to engage, be professional in our conduct, be respectful in the way in which we treat one another, work with one another, but also develop the right approach that actually has people at the heart of everything that we do. And it's not always about us. It has to be about the British people, how we fulfill their hopes and aspirations and how we deliver for them. How did you first get involved in politics and the Conservative Party? So um, I was contacted by my local MP. So we're now probably speaking about 1990. My local MP was actually a big figure in the Conservative Party. His name was Cecil Parkinson. Cecil was my local MP. He actually turned up in my mum and dad's shop one day and I was standing behind the counter and he literally said to me, isn't it about time, young lady, that you join the Conservative Party? Who was I to argue against that? And before I knew it, he'd written a note to me, sent me a membership form. And before I knew it, I was sitting at a branch meeting in Radlett, um, basically being part of the local Conservative Party. And that is why I speak passionately about the grassroots. I'm from the grassroots. I believe in the grassroots. And that was how I joined. And, you know, I think we all need to play our part now in sort of recruiting the next generation of members and young people. I was around 18 at the time. and That's when I first joined our party. What did you do before politics and how has it shaped your views? So I've had the privilege of having a great career before I became a member of parliament. So I've had the privilege of working around the world. I worked in consultancy. I worked for some very large firms. I traveled the world extensively. And that has absolutely shaped my approach, not just to politics, but my view on where we should be as a country, how we can stand up, stand tall in the world. As people will know, I campaign for Brexit to increase our global standing in the world and a lot of our reputation. So, you know, I think very broadly, not just about the domestic side, but where we are in the world, our place in the world, where we're going and the hopes and future of our country as well. So it shaped my views on so many things because obviously I've seen some countries where you know, people are struggling when it comes to issues such as poverty, for example, um, the lack of opportunity. And I think if nothing else, that has made me more and more determined through what I've done in politics, my time as a member of parliament. I've done a lot with schools in my own constituency to improve literacy in young children. But at the same time, I've also been the employment minister and one of the most rewarding jobs I've had is seeing people get on in life once they get a job and they start providing for their family and they're able to actually, you know, be able to be the breadwinner and actually look after their family and have new hopes for their family as well. And I think that's a really positive thing. What would you say is the highlight of your political career? 
so I mean, I've I mean, I've had an amazing political career. There's no doubt about that. You know, I was first elected in 2010, and that's a great thing. But the real highlights for me are very much um, shared highlights, and it's actually about us as a party when we're doing well, when we're delivering. So I think back to my first parliament, the way in which we turned around the economy, and I was part of that team in the Treasury. The other highlights are literally the work that we did on employment, turning around people's life chances when we were confronted with high levels of unemployment. And then collectively, I think about our party all the time. You know, as someone that's a campaigner, a member for the grassroots, I think about some of our outstanding election results at local council level. But the big results in 2015, a conservative majority government after a coalition government, and then 2019, none of that comes easily. That comes from being united, that comes from having a sense of purpose, and that comes from working together. Who is your biggest inspiration? So for me, it's, it's my dad. My, my, my parents, my dad in particular, um, came to our country during very difficult times and circumstances. He had to look after his family, and by that it wasn't just myself and my mum, but actually it was his wider family. And, you know, it's Britain. It was Britain that gave him the opportunity to stand on his own two feet. Um, if he effectively went on to buy a shop for his parents and then went on to become a shopkeeper himself. And I've seen the benefits and the dividends of hard work, hard work, hard graft, um, and what it means to provide for your family and to aspire to do better. And I always think my, my father, my family background is, is absolutely, that shaped me, it shaped me into who I am. What do you hope members will learn about you during this campaign that they may not already know? So I hope members see the real me, the full me, in a way in which, you know, when they've seen you on TV for sort of, you know, on and off the last five, six years, you only get a snapshot. And in my case, it was a snapshot, I'm afraid, when something terrible was happening or it was very specific to my brief. And I hope they'll get to see a lot more of me, learn about me, my grassroots activism. I think many of them know um, about that anyway, because I've been active in the party for, for a long time, nearly 30 years. So I hope they'll also see a side of me, which is one that's much more collegiate, collective, about unity, about teamwork, and about how we can rebuild, because we're in a very different situation than, you know, five years ago or even 12 months ago. And I very much hope that they will look at me and think that she's someone that we can work with and someone that we have confidence in to pick us up during this low point and actually help to restore our party and bring the renewal that we all want to see. What do you hope to show the public during this leadership campaign? So I'd like the public to, I think throughout this entire campaign, see that we are professional people and that we have the interests of the country at heart, because obviously the view of the public upon us right now is not particularly, it's not great. Um, we've just lost an election, the public have voted us out. Um, I think we need to surprise them. I think we need to show them that we actually can work together. We do think about them, we care about them, we care about our country, that we're all just not all, you know, tribal and partisan all the time. But actually we do this because we want to serve our country. We do this because we want a better future for our country. And as Conservatives, we know that we can drive the right kind of outcomes for our country and for the British people.